please leave. So today is not a good day. The fruit flies are starting to take over. So you remember after last time I was still left with my generic premise statement, which is future or time travel. And now I also have a fruit flies invasion. So what I really need now is a bunch of ideas. Basically brainstorming, that's what we're doing today. And for this, I want to look at the video how to brainstorm ideas for writing, uh, which is from Rachel Steven. And here too, I don't really know that much about her. I know that she's an author tuber who has been on the platform for a while. And I do remember seeing that video with the plot embryo a few years back, which is one that I want to look at as well coming up. And other than that, I don't really know much more. So let's just dive into it. Okay, my attention span today is a bit too short for all this intro. So I'm just skipping to, let's say about here. A building made of Lego, a finished novel. Still metaphors. Where's the technique? Ah, wait a sec. Okay, It's not that I don't understand why this part is in the video because explaining why brainstorming is useful and kind of like the whole selling the viewer on why brainstorming is a good tool is sort of the exposition part of setting up the problem that gets solved in this video. For me it's just really annoying when you have a video which is on how to brainstorm and the first half, I mean this is 18 minutes long and you have like the first half is all about why brainstorming is great when basically the reason why I'm here and watching this video is because I am already sold on brainstorming and I just want to know how to do it, right? But yeah, that's just kind of like a critique to YouTube 2000. Where, when's that video been made? Four years ago. So yeah, that's probably 2018. Yeah. So that was very much prevalent five years ago, right on YouTube, where it's this tips and tricks stuff is always kind of like the what and the very hard, uh, large chunk of the video is the what and then you get to the how. And now I feel the audience preference has very much started to evolve the videos that they are very much focused on the highlight points early on, because otherwise, I mean, you're competing with the entire platform here, right? So you're leaving pretty quickly if you don't get what you're looking for. Something that I wish actually in terms of offer to would happen even more. I feel that a lot of offer tube is still very much following this format. And I think the ironic thing is that a lot of offer tube lacks actually the engagement and the story element in their own videos that you would also have in a story, right? So the storytelling sometimes in some of those videos is very, like I said, 2018, very disformulaic tips and tricks kind of approach, which is funny considering the topic that we're talking about here. Sessions with breaks in between, some things are getting complicated, but it doesn't matter what problem is. Every time I break sorry, I get inside, I progress. Every single time. Even if I go 
and end up on magical answer with capital A. So if everything I've ever learned about writing could be put in a kind of hierarchy, say for the tree, how many metaphors do I have in this video? And so mm -hmm. yeah, how many? And everything I've ever learned about writing could be put on various branches, the leaves, and you know, order, and like also supporting the starting and reading there. This skill, brainstorming, would be deep in the roots, it would be the seed, it would be the absolute first thing, the most important thing. I am sold on brainstorming. Please tell me how to brainstorm. I'm not exaggerating when I say that. As a writer, I think this is the most important skill that you should use and master and continue to use. It's that important. It's number one. It will have a knock-on effect on everything you do. Okay, hopefully that's all you want. Let's get into details. Mm -hmm. What thing is brainstorming? You might be bored with that question, even as I said it, but I promise everybody doesn't exist. There is a difference between a brainstorming session and a Okay, so I guess this is the part where I have to video. Okay, so I guess this is the part of the video that I am There is a difference between a brainstorming session and a brainstorming session. There is a difference between a brainstorming session and a brainstorming session. Okay, so I guess this is the part of the video that I am looking for. Let's go. A brain dump is like downloading all the thoughts that are in your brain onto paper or onto a screen and um, onto whatever, like just getting rid of everything that's just turning around in there to give you some mental clarity, help you focus, help you de-stress and get less overwhelmed. It's a fantastic technique and I do believe in it and I advocate it, but it's not the same thing as brainstorming. Okay, so that's actually a really interesting point that the, the difference between uh, brain dumping, basically doing it without method, I would assume. So I, I'm guessing here that the brainstorming, what she means is basically one is just everything that you're thinking about, just get it on paper so that it's not clouding up your mind and that you have kind of like an overview of what there is. And by that logic, I would assume that now brainstorming here is very much methodical techniques on how to do it, to look for specific kind of ideas in a structured way. In the brain, onto the paper. Brainstorming is active problem solving. You start okay. with a specific query, a concept, a question, and you generate possible ideas and possibilities and solutions to that. If you've tried brainstorming in the past and maybe haven't found it super useful, think about what you were doing. Were you just getting down all the ideas that were in your head or were you focused towards a specific goal, because if it was before... Okay, so something that's actually really interesting here, which I hope she will cover later in the video at some point, is when do you use brain dumping and when do you use brainstorming in this case, right? And how to make that uh, part of your starting with the idea process, right? For example, I know it from other more like productivity stuff where the brain dumping thing is really more about getting clarity of how to even getting started and trying to get organized, right? It's more about in the getting things done system by David Allen. That's very famously kind of like, you have like your system where you have your to-do lists and stuff, and then you have your brain dumping technique, which you use every time you feel overwhelmed to capture everything that is on your mind that might become a to-do, right? So, and probably, hopefully we'll get into that a bit more, but if not, that would be something that I'm really interested in, in terms of looking at writing process, how to make these two things, techniques, and when to use them strategically in your own writing process. And the first part is So the difference between a brain dump and a brainstorm is focus. So in a brain dump, you're just getting rid of everything. In a brainstorm, you are focusing on finding a specific plot point, building out a specific character, answering a specific question, working out a specific problem. Then the magic question is that focus. The difference between a brain dump and a brainstorm is a magic question. Magic questions focus your brainstorm to get the specific actionable answers that you need. They are entirely determined by what you're trying to achieve with the brainstorm, and they can be modified to influence the kind of answers you get. They can be rephrased or reworded to align with what your brain likes to work with. So I'm going to start with my favourite method, and then I'm going to give you the four other ones just briefly, um, which are different ones you can try. My favourite method is called the five ideas method. I write my magic question at the top of the page, and I write the numbers one to five down the margin. I ask myself a magic question, and for each of those five, I come up with a different possible answer or idea for it. It's really that simple. If I get to five ideas, and I still don't have anything I'm super happy with, then I will write six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and just go again. You could also do it another way. Instead of just numbering one to five and controlling, kind of limiting it that way, you can um, just set a timer and come up with, like, try and go for as many numbers as you can reach in that timed period, ten minutes. 
Okay, so if I get it correctly, then what we are doing here is this is a writing technique that you use every time when you're about to start plotting and the question part always has to be in there so you're always specifically trying to answer a question so and then you're actively focusing on that so it's really very much a plotting technique right now the question here is what are the questions right so how i would do this based on what she said is basically looking at my premise statement here and figuring out what are the most important questions in there, what, what questions are sparked based on the premise. So first thing would be the unknown threat, right? I'm going forward, I'm going to call them the fruit flies. So, and then the question that I have is, what is it? What is the threat? Is that the question or yeah, what is the threat? And here, the thing is for myself, the problem. So I have like two distinctions. First for myself, I have to figure out what it actually is. And then the other question would be later down the line when it comes to telling the story, how to tell it so that I don't reveal right away what it is. It's more like make it a sequence of finding out. Okay, but for myself, so one to five, right? So what are they? What could they be? So aliens, going with the very basic. So aliens, um, humans, can they be humans? Why not? Humans, um, aliens is everything outside of the world. So that means everything off planet and everything from a different dimension or stuff. Uh, something supernatural. That is a creature that lives on the planet but has some sort of special mythological magical abilities. And then what else do we have? One more. So animals, uh, other species. So something that also lives on the planet that doesn't necessarily have supernatural abilities and that is a competing species of sorts. So five. Okay, and then another question is, so that was the unknown threat. How do they bring humanity? How do they... Now, this time around, let's try the second thing that she said. So timer and as many ideas as possible. So I'm keeping it short. Let's go with uh, two minutes. I can't type that fast when I'm on display. So I'm going with two, two minutes. There, you can see it, all right? Starting now. Um, How do they bring them to extinction? Mass attack. So that's everything that the aliens would do, right? It's kind of like... Then... Making them sick. I have no time to explain. Nuclear... War of sorts. Supernatural creatures. Possession. Other species is they also have four. The um, how do how do other how do animals defeat humans? In planets of the apes, they went to war. In I'm not really sure what the birds did. They just attacked, right? Making them their food source, eat them. So that's the zombie thing. How do they extinction stop them from 
Pro. So that's the, the children of men story, right? Where people couldn't have children anymore. So that's also kind of one. Not even sure what the threat was in that one. Um, we never found out, right? I still got 22 seconds. Uh, how else do you guys win? Mm, mix in oh, steel resources, mix species, and, and come on. Okay. So, okay, so either they have some sort of real great weapon that we don't stand a chance, or they made them sick or obviously the nuclear thing, uh, possession, what else do the demons do? You know, mostly possession, right? And sometimes they also just, do they ever just kill them? Do ghosts ever just kill people? Um, eat them, stop them from procreating, we had that one, steal resources, so they're just slowly being replaced, which is also number eight, where basically where one species just stops existing because slowly they mixed with the other and now there's like this new version. So that's kind of like oh, the longest over time and also the most peaceful one. But if you think about it, you could put it like in a horror setting and have it happen over a short period of time and then it would be very scary. So, um, cool. Let's see what else we can do here. I love this method because one of the hardest things about brainstorming is letting go of the first idea that your brain comes up with. Your brain almost always comes up with the laziest... <laughs> I'm being a bit too proud here, but yeah, yeah, I, I get where she's going with that and I'm pretty sure I did exactly that. ...dumbest answers yeah. to things first. And so if you want to get to the good stuff, you kind of have to get past those. And so this method is forcing you to come up with more... Which was number eight, right? The whole putting what happens in evolution and putting it in a short time frame. Not sure, it's not like the greatest idea, but it's definitely more creative than the other seven on that list here, right? So, yeah. So here are some other methods I like to use. Mind mapping, also known as clustering or spider diagrams. Again, you can do this on paper, just with A4, put a bubble in the middle, draw things out from it. And there's also apps and programs that you can use to do it online. Um, I do literally just start with a central idea, um, which would be your magic question, write that in the middle of the page, um, and then you start shooting out different ideas, possibilities, thoughts, like going in little, you know, drawing arrows and coming back, and you can even do some doodles and stuff if that appeals to you. And the next question that I have to answer. So where does the time travel come from? central question, right? And then where does the time travel come from? It was already there. Or it fruit flies brought it. So that could also be that the enemy had it already. That's the edge of tomorrow thing, right? Where they stole it from the enemy. That happens when you invade another world, you get your time travel stolen. And then where else could it come from? It's already there. Could be they are taking over. Um, it's already there, could be it's magic that humans can do. Or it's, oh, that's what it, it's an invention. It is the reason why the invasion happens to begin with. So that's kind of like the idea that's like, it's a, you know in Primeval how the whole anomalies thing was basically just a natural phenomenon and that's what caused the plot to happen basically. So it's kind of like that. There's like some sort of 
multiverse or rips in time and because of that the fruit flies come over from their world into the human world so and then that kind of explains away the time travel and also uh, gives them the tool to to fight them so kind of like that then um, what else so let's go with five again it's an invention it's the cause for why it happens so a natural thing it's already there fruit flies brought it so the the thread can do it what else could it be is that a magic they can do or it's technology they invented um in tomorrow war they invented it during the war which seems unlikely, but okay. In Edge of Tomorrow, they stole it from the aliens. In Back to the Future, Invention, Primeval, Natural Phenomenon. Uh, um, do we have magic? We have magic. They can already do it. I got nothing. Okay, I don't know where else does time travel come from. Those are my ideas. So. Again, the magic question thing, I like that, works. Mind mapping is just a different visual way of looking at it, from what I can tell. But I didn't yet actually like the other approach better, the listing. That's more in line with my own way of thinking. It's still very much you have a question and then you're looking for all kinds of different answers to it. And it's either do it in a visual way, do it in a list way, or do it in a freestyle text way, whichever is best for you. And also probably depending on what kind of situation you're using this technique for, you can try other approaches. So basically this whole brainstorming thing, I now used it for getting more ideas for the basic idea. So kind of getting a sense for what the story could be, but, but it's really something that you could use at any point in the plotting, developing process of your writing project. Uh, and then, like I said, the thing that I would be really interested in is um, how to use it more strategically, right? In combination with other techniques like the brain dumping, when to use brain dumping, when to use the brainstorming and kind of like, you know, how to, how to make it more part of the writing process and not just a tool that I remember uh, once and then come back to it next time I remember it. Do you know what I mean? Kind of like make it more part of a, an overall system. But in general, I really like this technique. Um, something that also um, I thought about before that I would really like to see would be what are basic standard questions that you can ask at the beginning of every writing project, you know, kind of like what is now I started with the premise statement that I had, right? And very specifically went to points in it that I wanted to have answered kind of. But if you don't even have that part, if you only have like a future time travel war kind of, kind of like very vague still, um, what are questions that you can ask that help for every writing project? Are there some or does it need to be that specific? So could you ask kind of like, who's the character in this story? Could be like the start, starting point and then you go with stereotypical kind of character types that you yourself probably like, kind of like the first that come to mind, right? So that would be really cool to have sort of like a list of the questions that you would ask yourself when starting a new writing project, you know, to just get started. So on that note, actually, let's look at the comments and see if there's something in there like that. Timestamps. That would have been nice if I had checked up before. Oops. There, da, exactly, this question. Do you have a list of some you go to when starting a novel? We have an answer. She liked it, but no. 
A video with examples of more magic questions would be amazingly helpful. Maybe there is one, right? So when was that? 2018? I'm not sure if it would be titled that, but let's see. Magic. I don't think there is a video on that. But yes, that would also be very much what I am interested in. If, if you have suggestions which questions you would be asking, then let me know or write them down. Uh, in the comments and then I will try to put together a list of what I have. Maybe, you know, even sort it into plot questions, character questions, world building questions, kind of like that. I think that would be really cool in combination with this technique. So in general, I know I've been very critical, especially in the beginning of this video. I really like the whole approach on how to do it. That was very hands-on, right? The video itself, if it had been like half as long, if it had just been like uh, very much focusing on the how, I think that would make the video so much better because, like I said, probably if you're uh, searching for this kind of title, you're already sold on why brainstorming is the thing that you want to do in this situation. I don't, obviously, if you look at it, I don't necessarily have more um, in terms of originality or anything like that, right? So we, the originality thing is still very much lacking. It's still very generic. We have the generic opponents and stuff. But this technique is something that I feel is very helpful when it comes to trying to figure out all the elements that are in the idea, what are the options, and then using that as a starting point. Which is the next thing that I want to look at very much is now starting to plot. So these are the options that I have. The next step is how do I choose them and how do I put them in a story kind of way? So how do I, you know, right now those are just elements. How do I put them into an actual coherent system that makes it a story and not just story elements? So if you're interested in that, you can go to this video here where we'll be looking at plotting. Is this everything? I feel like I forgot something.